why this shop is so popular was 2.5 ringgit. This is definitely the best you can get. longest way back home from Europe to China and now I am in Penang in Malaysia ever since I am in Malaysia everyone is recommend me to go to Penang if there are a few words to describe this place that is it's very multicultural and it's a city of extremely good food the modern history of Penang starts in the 1870s with the start of the British colonial times. Indians, Chinese and people from other countries have arrived. They lived together with the Malays and they've created a very diversified culture. Different languages are spoken, different religions can be found and you can see houses of different styles. For example, the Chinese ancestral halls in Hindu temples British colonial architecture. In short, it's truly a cultural melting pot. And when it comes to the cuisine, the food in Penang is truly Asia fusion with a mixture of local Malay food, Chinese food, Indian food, Thai food, etc. So today's plan is going to be very simple. I'm going to tour around in a historical area of Georgia town and then I'm going to try some of the most typical local food. I am leaving my hostel now. I paid about 40 ringgit for my bed. This hotel is very nice, very beautiful. It was renovated from old house, but the design is very simple yet very, very stylish. Our room is on the second floor and on the ground floor, it is a cafe. If you want to have breakfast in Penang, you have so many different choices. You can just walk into many of the restaurants near the street and order a fried rice or fried noodle or soup noodle and if you prefer western breakfast you can find plenty of good cafes with authentic coffee and western bakery but a typical local breakfast it's often a bowl of noodles or curry rice together with a tea tarak or kopi u and that's what i am going to try for this morning somehow i have to wait really long for the green light i've been waiting for almost two minutes now and it's still not green yet this is ali nasi landmark the most popular place where you can eat the coconut rice it's very crowded inside and let's see if i can find a seat hello can I have one Billy Hello. Hello. and one and then one copy o copy o copy o this ah. here <laughs> and the tea tari tea tea tari tea tari also here, here. okay ah. here eat ah. one eh? here one okay two fifty this piece costs only two fifty. There are so many good foods here and I want to order more. Those are chow mein, like fried noodles. Those are the western bread. Here you have Hokkien prawn mian, which is some um, shrimp noodle from Fujian province. And then yun tun, kind of a Chinese dumplings, fried rice. Ni hao, can you get a chow pai cha shao ma? Chow pai shao bao. Yiga, one. Excuse me, what is this? Uh, lame. Lame? Yeah, lame. Lame. Toko, toko. Toko. Okay, I can have a toko, ma. Hey, 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 hey,
for this there is rice and some chili paste some small fishes and then that's the egg on the top and this wow i think it's pork inside Now I realize why this shop is so popular with 2.5 ringgit. This is definitely the best you can get. In the morning, I am going to the Kiklok Sea Temple first. It's, it's a bit far from the city center, so I'm going to take a bus. That is the bus station signage. It's very small and cute. It's the platform here. The bus should be arriving in about five minutes only. The bus ride is 2 ringgit per ride I was a bit afraid of the traffic jam, but the bus ride was really good. So now I am at Kikbok Si Kikbok Jile, which means Supreme Joy. It's a literal translation of Sukhavati, which means the Buddhist pill land. There are so many turtles in this pool. They are the symbol of longevity. And he's feeding them with lettuce. Inside this temple, it's very big. There are different components, and that's one of the most important ones. The Temple of 10,000 Buddha. It also has a very interesting mixture of different styles. On the top, that's a Burmese style. In the middle, it's the Thailand style. And at the bottom, that's the Chinese style. This huge statue is called Guan Shi Ying, which means the goddess of mercy. But whether it's man or woman, it's he or she, I have no idea. Because some said it's a man and others said it's a woman. Next to that statue, this one was actually the old statue of Guan Shi Ying. But when this one was broken, money was raised and a new one was constructed. And besides, they made a big pagoda to protect the statue. The weather is changing really fast, just a minute it was raining and now it's sunny and guess what I've seen, the rainbows! Once you are on the street, you can really feel this mixture of different cultures. For example, over there that is the bridge style fire station and many of the signages are written Chinese. That's 
the Chinese elements. That's a Chinese school and that is a Chinese temple. And this area is called the Little India. For example, here you can find a, a tea kadai, um, an Indian tea house, and over there that's an Indian temple. This temple is called Sirimahamaran Temple. I've just learned it from Google actually. It's one of the oldest Hindu temple in Penang. It has a history of more than 200 years. And look at on the top, there are so many different gods and it's very, very colorful. Filming is not allowed inside, but I went inside. Uh, they are doing some very interesting puja, which means the rituals. They are making offerings to the god and at the same time washing the god with fresh coconut water This restaurant seems popular too. There are so many photos. I guess those are the celebrities who have been to this restaurant. Finally, it's my turn. It's simply impossible for me to find a place to sit. But this is my Jenry, Chenry. There is a huge ice block and some green noodles and red bean cake. So the taste is like sweet, a little bit salty. It has a strong red bean paste flavor. Very tasty. The city of Penang has a strong relation with the Chinese. You can also find a lot of the ancestral holes. For example, that one is called Li Shi Zongzi, which means the ancestral hole of the Li family. So many of the workers, Chinese workers uh, in Malaysia, they are from Fujian or Guangdong province. And in that region, there is a strong culture. That means the relation, social relation is very much built on the blood. People of the same family name stay in one village. And when they move to Malaysia, they bring the same culture to here. Those ancestral holes are used to worship the ancestors and also for family gatherings, for meetings. They help the Chinese to stay together in a foreign country. Wu Shi Jia Miao. 
and I have the feeling that um, in Malaysia I've seen a lot of traditional Chinese elements that I actually have never seen back in China. China's influence to Penang can be traced back to 600 years ago when the famous Captain Zheng He arrived here. Baba is actually a Persian word which means the man and Nunya has a Spanish origin and it refers to the woman Baba Nyungya, which is a very interesting name and many of them are actually very rich merchants so this is one of the mansion house of one of the rich merchants from this group everything in this mansion is extremely decorative those are the beautiful carvings on the door the wooden carvings and even on the chairs there is seashell inlay At the back of the mansion here is the ancestral hall. The whole structure, whole layout of this mansion follows the traditional Chinese architectural style. And in the middle of the ancestral halls, those are the nameplates of the past members of this family. The last place I want to show you is here, the Jetty clans. In the 19th century, when the Chinese immigrants arrive, they stay here and they've established the clans. Ah, 就是为大轮船服务的在南洋这里马六甲以前这里找一个港口让它转山然后我们华人还是保留华人可以学习到，所以我们很注重中文。I've just met that interesting uh, man over there, old man there. He used to be a tourist guide, and he told me a lot of history about this place. And most of them are from Fujian province. 你好，你好。Those are the floating houses belong to different clans, and 
According to Mr. Wang, the Chinese they didn't always live on the water before they lived on the banks. But in the 19th century, the British government started to charge the house tax, and the Chinese workers they want to avoid paying the tax because they are quite poor. So they were asking the British government whether they can stop paying this tax if they move onto the water. And the British government said yes, and that's why they started constructing all those floating houses on the water. This is also the end of today's video. I'm going to watch this beautiful sunset. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you want to support my work or if you like this video, please give me a thumb up or leave a comment. Thanks for watching and see you next time.